friends, thanks for joining us this evening for another virtual D8 Youth Workshop. I'm Terry Fender, your District 8 Director. Uh, this evening we have the breed Silvers uh, being spoken on, and we have a well-known longtime judge uh, speaking, as well as he also serves as the Illinois Youth Adult Leader today. So we're very fortunate to have him here. Uh, and that would be Mr. Joel Marshall. Uh, we're going to send it off to Joel and he's going to talk about Silvers and then we'll be coming back to me for some closing comments. And while you're watching this presentation, please uh, on Facebook Live, uh, check in where you're from. It's always great to see uh, where our viewers are coming from. With that said, we're going to send it off to Joel. Hello, Mr. K. My name is Joel Marshall. Uh, I've been doing this uh, rabbit thing for uh, as of in 10 days, May 30th. 50 years. My mom and dad started in the rabbit thing before I was even born. They were John and Jan Marshall. We were Jam's Rabbit Tree. And they didn't want to change the rabbit tree name, so they named other kids with names that started with J. My brother's John. I'm Joel. Crazy people. Crazy rabbit people, right? Uh, I'm probably best known for English spots because that's what the family raised for all these years. But one breed that's always had my, my eye in our top five favorite breeds has always been Silvers. Silvers have always intrigued me. I always seem like an old school type breed that's always interested me. I'm kind of an antique guy. I like that. And besides, the silvers now kind of match my hair color, so I'm all about that. Um, the silver is actually the uh, oldest known breed in, or thought to be the oldest breed in the Western Hemisphere. Originally, they thought they were, were thought to have come on ships from Siam into the Western Hemisphere. And they've been known to exist in the British Islands since about 1500 AD. It is one of the original breeds in the, uh, recognized by the National Pet Stock Association when it formed in 1910. It was one of the, the very original breeds that was in that original standard. Uh, the silver looks more like its ancestors than any breed in our standard. They're very old school. Um, the bucks especially, as you can see this guy here, they're very docile. Um, <laughs> he's just more like a pet. Uh, he's been sitting here for five minutes or so waiting for the broadcast to even start. This, of course, is a fawn silver. Uh, many do not realize what a unique breed we have in our SOP. Uh, there's a big push to re uh, retain the uniqueness of this breed. Uh, and then there's another push to kind of make it more American to try to find a uh, fall somewhere in the middle. Biggest point of contention, and, and the biggest thing that always confused me, even as a judge, when I was first judging these was body type. Like, what are these things supposed to look like? What's this medium length? How are we supposed to judge them? How are we supposed to pose them? Are, are we moving, letting them move around freely? I mean, what are we doing here? Um, it was always something that, that baffled me. Um, and then on top of that, they're, they're, they're joined in with the compact breeds and the standard. And it's like, well, that's confusing too. But when you go and look at the standard, one of the first things it says, the body is to be medium length with a slight taper from the hindquarters to the shoulders. So right away, we're out of this compact range. Um, we're not looking for a rabbit that has this depth to width, you know, equal, balanced. It's more, uh, in, in once upon a time, we used to say, oh, the rabbit's supposed to look like half a basketball. We don't do that anymore. But just to draw a comparison, the silver is more of a half of a rugby ball. Have you ever seen a rugby ball? It's just, you just want a nice rise, a nice curvature that rounds off and goes to the, the top of the hip and then curves down. Um, you don't want to feel a lot of bones in them. You still want your shoulder width up here in the front. I'm getting tired of moving my skirt. Um, yeah, we, normally, you know, being in a compact, you want to picture this little butter ball, but that's not what we're going with at all. Um, You have 20 points on type. So the next thing we'll talk about is going to be some silver. Let me let me show you one more fawn. I'll try this one. She doesn't quite look the same as she did at Reno, but this was actually best to breed at Reno. She is a little more a little more top line to her but we're still carrying that medium length. We have our shoulder width, rounds off to a nice hind quarter. Um, a little bit darker in color. I think she's gotten a little bit darker since Reno even. 
um, but this gives you a little more idea of another, you know, another style pawn, a little bit different type structure. And there's some different sizes. I mean, we have a pretty wide uh, weight range from four to seven pounds, uh, ideal weight of six pounds in the seniors. Um, so we talked about type. Type is clearly, uh, it's 20 points, but if you look in the standard, color is 50 points total, with uh, surface color and under color being 15, evenness of silvering being 20, that's paramount, and brightness of silvering being another 15. So what's this silvering? And what's evenness? And how does this all work? Uh, but by far, it's the largest deciding factor. I'll take left. Uh, the evenness of silvering is probably another thing that has always kind of confused me a little bit. Uh, I can't, it's hard to see it here, but with like her ears, the tips of her ears, don't really blend in with the body. Ideally, you'd want to blend in, lay the ears down on the back, and you can blend in with the body itself. This guy's one of the more evenly silver, silvered silvers I've ever raised. So what are we looking at in evenness of silvering? Um, it does have a lot to do with the age of the animal. Juniors won't show generally as much evenness of silvering. Uh, they're born mostly all black or all solid colored and the silvering comes in at a later date. Uh, the ears and the extremities finish out the uh, latest. Um, I like to uh, look at the toes. You wanna look at the toes. You wanna see that the silvering comes in all the way down the feet. You want to look at the top of the tail, the body itself, uh, the face, the cheeks is a place where it really tends to not fill in as well. That's a lot of times the difference because you get a big class of silvers. That's the difference between the, the good ones and the bad ones, the men and the boys. Uh, the second down left. So let me put that one there. I'm done with the balls. So this is the brown. This guy is the most evenly silvered, silver and silver I've ever raised. Well, one of the, still one of the best. Um, he has very good silvering on the cheeks, carries that on the toes, on the top of the tail. This guy was actually best of breed at the Silver National last year. Um, I like to see him round up a little bit better on the hips. Uh, their coat structures are very important too. The silver is actually a, a guard hair and it's supposed to pop out a little bit more and that's what's going to give you that brightness. But in the blacks, you also have to look, when you're looking at the evenness, and through the chest and belly. The pawns are white underneath, of course, so you don't have that. Um, there's no, uh, it's not about how heavy or how light the silvering is, it's about evenness. There should be no preference given or heaviness or lightness, it's evenness. Um, there's no current language for amount of silvering. I think sometimes the uh, ones that have a little more silvering just tend to give them a little more pop. Uh, try not to have a preference over evenness or lightness. Try to go with just the, the, the evenness period, not, not heavy or light. Uh, The fur is a flyback, short, snappy, laying smooth, and it's going to have a lot of play in how that, that uh, silvering is going to lay out, too. Point schedule is fairly even on these guys. Um, so you're really looking for a very well-balanced breed. You've got 20 on tight, 15 on fur, 15 on surface color, 20 on uh, bright evenness of silvering, and 15 on brightness of silvering. So you're pretty much level right across the board. So you're going to try to find an animal that has the best, uh, I mean, you're going to have to be forgiving and sometimes, in, you know, in your class one way or the other, but it's going to be the animal that has the best of all features. Uh, this guy, I said, he's won a national. He won his class in Massachusetts as a junior, came back the following spring and was best of breed at the national. So he's very consistent as far as being what we're looking for in the silver breed. Um, I'll show you a few other styles. 
Let's talk about brown color. Uh, what really makes the silvering on the browns pop is the black ticking. I don't know, I'll try to get in, in this as much. You want a rich rufous undercolor, but when, you're, when you bring the coat back, you should have a good even amount of black ticking as you do with silvering. Now he's light in the silvering, but I, he's really, really has amazing black ticking. He's a little bit darker in a surface color and it kind of, you can kind of see that. Again, we're going with that medium length body style. The silvers are very slim, they're very sleek, firm, smooth animals. They should be very muscular, very solid. That coat should be very, that's a short, snappy coat. Okay, and I'll take the other block, please. They hold their age pretty well, and, and as I said, they're very, the does can get a little owly, but the bucks, I mean, this guy, he's got to have his petting every day when he, when he comes out to feed. Um, he's got his paws up on the dish. I told him I'd bring him on TV today, so we got to end with him. He's an older buck, but he's done very well in his time. Um, a little bit bigger style, but still we have this medium length. Um, he could probably use a little more silvering on his, uh, on his face to even out, but it's not too bad. He has real good silvering on the ears, blends very well. It's good silvering on the cheeks. And again, you're gonna look at the toes. You want silver coming all the way up the feet. Yeah, it's, you almost have to see some. I can tell you, even when I, before I started raising them, I, I still didn't know. And it wasn't until I started raising them that I really started to get a feel for what the heck this silvering is. And even as a silvering, and you start seeing the differences in the litters, and you start seeing a bunch of these boogers, and then you realize, oh, that's what they're talking about. Um, but if you get in a class, just look at all these things. Um, that's that's the real difference on these guys. Uh, do we have any questions? Um, I've got some people in here that have chimed in saying that they're watching you from Kentucky, Australia. I saw Prude Crew. Um, of course, we've got, we got Wyoming in here. We've got Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio. Um, Hi, Nicole, watching me. Um, I Nicole. believe I believe your camera person is watching you. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, we got New Jersey popping in here. New Jersey, hello. <laughs> Australia, hello. Wyoming, hello. Indiana, hello. Hello. Say hello. You can go ahead, Terry. All righty. There'll probably be some questions coming from the audience. Uh, Joel, I guess one question I wanted to bounce off of you. Uh, when you're showing the silvers, is there something that you find that maybe gets emphasized more than it should in the judging or maybe something that doesn't get emphasized enough? Type gets, I feel, overemphasized and even as the silvering gets underemphasized. Okay. You know me, I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, and, and, you know, and I'm a type guy too and it's hard not to go with that animal with that sleep you know and I, I try to carry that you know if I'm a type guy to begin with I, my animals and I think you've seen everything I've put on the tables here I mean these are my brood bucks except for the one doe these are my brood bucks I mean they have to have type so I, I, I try to have that basis to begin with you know you, you work from the structure up um, and, and I hate to say it you know but I just feel that there's too many of them that are just judged on type because that's what everybody knows for sure. You know, they, 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 they know what a smooth body is, but um, it's just the nuances of the silvering itself uh, that gets to be a little more confusing to a lot. They've cleaned up the standard a lot on silvering from when I first started judging. Um, I can tell you it was really, so the, old, the old standard was not, you know, it was, it was confusing. Um, it's, it's cleaned up a lot. Great, great. Amanda, do you have any questions come in that you're seeing? Um, 
I have some people saying they're watching from Marietta, Ohio, and then I've got a Wisconsin here. Marietta, Ohio. I know some people in Marietta, Ohio. Yeah. This is, this is Brian that just said he's chimed in from Marietta. Um, I do have a question in here. It says, how much are silvers similar to the Diargent breeds if at all? Uh, just in the fact that they don't have the coloration when they're born. Um, if there's going to be any breed that they're going to be more closely emulating it would be the silver fox naturally other than the size and the coat difference and type difference. But I mean, as far as silvering, um, there is a, you do notice that sometimes there is an area that there is a, a it, what looks to be like a butterfly on these guys and we really don't want it. And it's been a tough, it's, it, I mean, for hundreds of years, it's been a tough area to fill in. Um, but that, you know, you do see that, of course, uh, the Arjons have that as well. But other than the fact that they don't have the color when they're born, that's about it. Okay. I have some people chiming in saying they're watching from Massachusetts and also Minnesota. Massachusetts, Minnesota. Yeah. Land of my mom. <laughs> a lot of family in Minnesota. Minnesota. And um, I've got a question here. It says some silvered breeds like runs and champagnes go through a patchy stage. How does the color, how does the color on silvers mature? The blacks and the fawns seem to be doing pretty good. Yeah, I've got browns out there that, yeah, they're like patchwork quilts, you know. <laughs> yeah, just like any of them, it seems like there's some of them that'll keep their coats in longer than others. Uh, some will want to do, uh, these guys tend to do more of a slow molt. You know, I don't have the ones that just do the poof. You know, I'm today I'm okay, tomorrow I'm like, I look like an Angora. Uh, these guys just kind of, their coats just kind of slip out and come in. Uh, but yeah, I do have some patchiness in the browns. The browns are kind of known for that. Uh, do you have anything, Terry? Well, I got my question answered. So do you see any more coming in? Um, as of right this moment, I do not. Okay. <laughs> Well, I want to say it's thank like, you. I invite anybody to, you know, if they want to get some silver, especially once a lot of this gets over, um, I'm always here to help, especially youth members out with silvers. They can contact me anytime. I do have this uh, presentation that I can email to somebody if they want it. Um, it's been approved by the old school and the new school breed, breeders of the silver club. Um, the, the silver club is always willing to help people. So if you want some animals or, you know, you have questions, just reach out to us. Okay, Joel, I think if you, if you don't mind sending me a copy, we can probably get that posted up on District 8 for people to take a yep. look at too, totally. if you don't mind. Definitely yep, mail it to you. Cool, cool. Absolutely. Thank you. Amanda, hey. anything else? I actually do have quite a bit that just chimed in here. Excellent. <laughs> the one that was asking about, um, how the silver, how the color on silver matures chimed in and asked in regards to silver development. Um, I think as they get older, maybe the silvering gets a little heavier, kind of like me. My heavy my silvering seems to get a little bit heavier as I've gotten older. Um, that's probably about it. I mean, the silvering they have, they have is, I mean, what you see is what you, you know, you get. Um, I would think at six to eight months, they should be pretty much finished out. Some are, you know, some obviously are going to finish out a little bit sooner than others. Just like with any breed, you got some that prime out quicker. Some take a little bit longer. Um, but that's, I think, unless, you know, they, they would like me to further expunge on that question. That's what I have for that. Okay. I've got some people watching in here from Virginia. Um, Virginia. I'm actually sitting here guessing, like watching. Disqualification in the silver uh, is a dewlap. You can't have a dewlap. Do you try to keep color to color when you're breeding them, or can you mix and match like a black to a fawn? Never black to fawn. Never black to fawn. I, I've been known to run a, a black and a brown together and occasionally uh, a fawn and a brown, uh, not too much doing that, but I have, I have intermixed my, my blacks and my browns a little bit. The old schoolers, 
And most people will tell you absolutely not to, but if I need to fix type or if I'm trying to bring some silvering in for, you know, or type or something like that, I'm going to do it. So it hasn't hurt me. I've not noticed any, anything that's harmed anything. You definitely don't want to breed black to fawn though. We don't want any, uh, you don't want that E extension to get in there too much. And I've seen some weird things there. And then here's one in here that says, um, do you believe in saying build the barn before you worry about painting it? And does that apply more or less to Yeah, that's, that's what I was saying about type earlier is yeah, while the standard and, and while I said that I feel that they're judged on type exclusively sometimes Yes, I do build the barn first. As I said, my, my, my herd bucks here, they're all what I feel very strong type rabbits. Um, absolutely. And, and, and I mean, I probably got 30 or 40 of these things and if they don't have good type, I'm sorry, they don't, they don't stay. That's just, they have to have type. If you want some humor, there's a question on here. Sure, I don't care. Why is your silvering so uneven? I have very good silvering. <laughs> very even. <laughs> um, it looks like, as far as right this moment, that looks like all that I've got um, for questions coming in. All righty then. All righty. Well, Joel, I certainly want to thank you for joining us this evening and showing us those okay, awesome man. silvers that you have. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. And my friends out there watching this, uh, I've been trying to present some of the breeds that we don't see as too, too often here in our district. And Silvers is one of them. And when I thought of Silvers, Joel was the person that came to my mind, uh, some super, super animals out there. Okay. And I really appreciate Joel. As we said, he's a longtime judge. Plus, he also works at the Youth of Illinois. So that, these are open to everybody. Like I said, these virtual workshops are primarily for our D8 youth, but just like in our live ones at the shows when we have them, everyone's welcome there, especially in times like these. So no matter where you're at across the ARBA, please join us for these. Uh, again, I want to thank Joel for joining us. I want to thank right. Amanda Behe at the Control Center. She puts in a lot of time. Up, you guys. Yep. She puts in a lot of time on this. And I want to thank Jane Burke for helping us with the promotions on those flyers. Does an excellent job. And of course, I want to thank everybody out there for watching us. This is what we do them for. Uh, today, we was with Joel in Illinois. Coming up very soon, Saturday, May 23rd at 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, we'll be traveling out to Illinois, to, excuse me, out to Pennsylvania to join uh, Judge John Graybill as he talks on the Polish. I know at my home club when we have Polish and John happens to be judging, he's one of the people that uh, the Polish usually requests. So when I wanted to do Polish, I thought, let's see if John will be interested. So he'll be joining us there. And around that time, too, we'll be announcing a few more dates to come for uh, later on. We've got some nice speakers lined up and some nice topics. So hopefully you'll be able to join us. And remember, as always, we're recording these events. So if you missed the entire event today or part of it, Join our YouTube channel very soon, and we'll have the recorded version up there, along with many other videos. And our YouTube channel is called ARBA D8 Website. And I imagine most of you joining us today are probably ARBA members. But if you're new to the hobby or happen to be 4-H or FFA members is starting, we welcome you here to the ARBA. Simply visit our website at arba.net and join up, and we'll be glad to have you. With that... Thank you for joining us. Stay safe, my friends, and hope to see you Saturday.